This is Jared Horak. Welcome to my latest horse racing video. And in this video, I'm going to do analysis of the 2023 Saudi Cup. I keep checking my YouTube channel uh, for all of my Oaks and Derby points races, uh, both of those video series each week uh, that I post on my YouTube channel. And this week uh, for those series, I'm going to do the Honey Bee and the Rebel from Oakland Park. So stay tuned to those, but let's do the Saudi Cup in this video. It's going to be the eighth race for Saturday, February 25th. It's going to be the Grade 1 $20 million Saudi Cup uh, for four-year-olds and up. And they're going to be traveling a mile and an eighth on the main track. This is a one-turn race. And number one is Cafe Pharaoh. Now, it's number one, but will be breaking from post position 13. And he is 4-1 to one on the morning line. He's run 13 times, and he's won seven races, but he's never finished second and third. So he's one of those horses that when he shows up, he means business, and he wins, or he's off the board. And we'll have to see. Uh, I'm sure they would love to win this race uh, for sure. Uh, this horse is coming in uh, from Japan, and he won a Group 1 race last year, the February stakes. That was in February of last year. And then he ran in June in a turf race, and he was 17th in an 18-horse field. And then a mile in the slop last time in a 16-horse field when he was last seen on October 10th. Uh, he won that one by a nose. So we'll have to see how he ends up uh, handling this kind of company uh, leaving Japan uh, and running in a big race like this. Uh, number two in here, breaking from post position 10, is Country Grammar, and he's 6-1 to one morning line. He's adding blinkers for this race. Uh, he's been very good for trainer Bob Baffert. He's run 14 times, 5 wins, 5 seconds, and a third. He's banked more than $11 million, and he was second, beating a half length in this race last year. And he's one that he's he's always been best, I think, at a mile and a quarter. Uh, you can go back to some of his uh, earlier form, um, when he was in the Bob Baffert barn, the Hollywood Gold Cup at Santa Anita Park, uh, that was a mile and a quarter. He won that one by a head, and then he ended up finishing second, beating a half length in this race. The mile and a quarter Dubai World Cup, he won that one last year. Uh, the Grade 2 San Diego at a mile and a 16th, probably too short for him, he was second. And then Flightline whipped him by 19 lengths in the Grade 1 Pacific Classic at this distance. The awesome again stakes, he was second at a mile and an eighth around two turns. And then last time, the grade two San Antonio at Santa Anita, a good tune-up for this. He won that one by four lengths. It was a mile and a sixteenth. That race was too short for him, but he just outclassed that field. And now he's uh, back in Saudi Arabia uh, with a decent shot to finish somewhere in the top three in here. Frankie Dettori, uh, who rode him in the Dubai World Cup to victory last year, also rode him in the San Antonio, and he's going to ride again. And he's a solid threat. I just wish the race was a, a bit longer. He's really best at a mile and a quarter. A crown pride is next. Uh, he's number three, and he will break from pros three. And he's 10 to one morning line. He's run eight times, three wins, three seconds. And he's, he's one of the horses that was a pace casualty in the Kentucky Derby last year when that pace just completely fell apart. And he was really all over that pace. He was never further than a half length back. They were flying in the early going, and he just couldn't keep up, just like all the other early runners. He finished 13th, beaten 18 lengths. He did win the UAE Derby at a mile and 3 16ths uh, last year in Dubai, prior to the Kentucky Derby. And then in his last three starts in Japan, he finished second in all three of them, including at a mile and an eighth at this distance of the Champions Cup, a grade one, uh, December 4th, with his last start. He was second by a neck. So good effort there. I think he's not outmatched in this race. Uh, number four, Emblem Road, uh, won this race last year, uh, defeating Country Grammar by a half length. And he loves this oval. He's run nine times with seven wins and a second. Now, after he won uh, the Saudi Cup last year, they took him to France in a group three on turf. He was fifth in a six-horse field, and that experiment ended quickly. They put him uh, back to Saudi Arabia last time, tuning up for this a one-mile local race on January 13th, and he won that one easily by four lengths. That was a 19-horse field. Uh, so now he seems to be back in good form, uh, trying to repeat his upset victory last year. Uh, Geoglyph is the next one. He's number five, and he'll break from post 12 in here. And I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but Emblem Road breaks from post eight. Uh, so Geoglyph breaking from post 12 at 20 to one on the line, and he's run eight times. He has three wins and a second-place finish. But his last three starts against Group 1 company on turf at a mile and a half and then twice at a mile and a quarter, uh, he was no threat in those races. Uh, so he's one that's going to have to step up his game as he switches surfaces. Uh, number six, uh, June Lightboat. Uh, this one, eight to one morning line, and he will break from post six. And he really got good when they switched him over from turf uh, to the main track. 
but he did win a few turf races back in 2021. He had a, a nice victory at a mile and then at a mile and an eighth, but they were lesser races. And then last year, uh, they decided to switch him over to the main track. And that that's what he wants to do, it looks like. Because this one, the six-year-old horse with 25 starts, seven wins, five seconds, and two-thirds. Uh, last summer, on July 24th, moving to the main track at a mile and a 16th, he finished second. But then he won his next three-third starts at a mile and an eighth. He won that one in a 15-horse field, a mile and three-sixteenths. In his next start, a group three in Japan on October 1st, he won that one. And then he stepped up to the grade one uh, Champions Cup at a mile and an eighth, and he defeated Crown's Pride by a neck. So he's one that really got good on dirt. He's fresh for this. And just based on that form from late last year, he seems like a contender in here. And Pantha Lassa, breaking from the inside post, is number seven in here. And he's 10 to one morning line. He's run 24 times. He's had six wins and six second place finishes. Most of his races have been on turf. Last time in a group one, uh, that was in Hong Kong. He finished 10th in a 12-horse field, beaten 14 lengths. His form in Japan was pretty good on turf. Uh, but we're just going to have to see how he handles the main track and this kind of tough company breaking from that inside post. Number eight, Remorse, 30 to one morning line. Uh, this one, most of his action has been in Dubai and he's run uh, 16 times. He's very consistent. 14 out of 16, he finished in the top three with four wins, eight seconds and two thirds. He's putting blinkers on in this spot and he was third beaten eight lengths in a group two in Dubai last time out. Uh, he was in this race last year. He was sixth, beating almost five lengths in that 10-horse field. Going to have to step up his game. Number nine, Scotland Yard has been in excellent form uh, locally. Uh, but before that, he ran in the United States, and he began his career with trainer Steve Asmussen, the four maiden special weight races. He was second in his debut after setting the pace at Fairgrounds February of last year. He was ninth, beating 21 lengths in his second start, and the slop didn't like that footing. And then back on a fast track at Churchill Downs last May, he was a solid third after battling on the pace. And again, he was forwardly placed at a mile and three sixteenths at Churchill Downs in his final start for Asbusen, and he finished second there. Then he moved over to Saudi Arabia, and he romped in his last three starts. His first victory of his career, he won by eight lengths in a 19-horse field in a local race on December 31st, clicked right back in his next start at one mile, an 18-horse field. He won by almost four. And then last time, a 17-horse field at a mile and a quarter. That was on January 28th, and he won by 10. So he's really been dominating local company, uh, but they were lesser local horses, certainly, than he's going to be facing here. But he does like the track, and, and he's in sharp form. Uh, Taba is the next one, and he's number 10, but he will break from post two, and he's 5-2 to two morning line. His regular rider, Mike Smith, is aboard. This is a four-year-old coat, a son of gun runner, and he's got a lot of upside He's only run seven times with four wins, a second and a third. I've always liked this one. He was outstanding in his career debut uh, last March at Santa Anita, romping by seven lengths at six furlongs. Second career start, they jumped him right into the Santa Anita Derby, and he was able to defeat uh, more experienced rivals like his stablemate Messier, and he was able to get past that one and win by more than two lengths. It was asking an awful lot of this one to run in the Kentucky Derby in just his third lifetime start. And then also with that pace that was crazy in that derby. And he chased the pace from post 12 in the 20-horse field. He was well-placed, but you really didn't want to be well-placed in the early going that day. And he ended up retreating. He finished 12th, beating 17 lengths. Uh, his next start uh, in the Haskell Stakes, uh, he just missed by a head. Cyberknife beat him. And uh, he just drifted wide. Cyberknife had the better inside trip. Uh, Taba had to go outside. He missed by a head. And then Jack Christopher, the pace setter there, ended up finishing a clear third. So, so Taba ran a good race there, and then he bounced back and got another victory in the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby. He stalked the pace, and he dominated, and he won by more than three. Zandon was the winner, and he turned the tables on Cyberknife that day. And then in the Breeders' Cup Classic, flight line was just so dominating there. And Taba was in the battle for second with Olympiad, but he lost that battle, and he, he just missed second by a half length. But he was a clear third. And then he came back and he cut back in distance to seven furlongs in the grade one Malibu opening day at Santa Anita, December 26th of last year. And he tracked the pace from second and he dominated and he won by more than four lengths. So he's one that can handle any kind of distance. He's won at six furlongs and seven furlongs and a mile and an eighth. Uh, so he's one that this mile and an eighth distance won't give him any trouble. But if he can work out any kind of good inside trip, he's got a very good chance to win this. A uh, Vin de Gard is number 11 and he's 20 to one morning line. He's 5 for 21 lifetime. He has a second and fourth place 
of four third place finishes as well. In a group one in Japan last time, he was 15th in an 18 horse field. Uh, you got to go all the way back to October of 2020 to find his last win. And he was in the Breeders' Cup last year in that Breeders' Cup mile, that one, uh, one mile turf race. Uh, that was actually in December of the 2020, um, November of 2021. So he was in that 2021 Breeders' Cup at Del Mar, and he was 12th in a 13 horse field. And then, as I said, he ran uh, twice last year. Uh, he was in the Dubai turf uh, that race. He finished third in a 14 horse field. And then that group one race I mentioned last time in Japan, he was no threat. Really, he's going to need to step up his game here of uh, switching surfaces. Uh, Lagertha Rhyme, a five year old mare. Uh, this one is seven for 23. He's got five seconds and four thirds. Likes this track, four for seven with a second place finish. That second place finish was last time on, on January 27th at one mile. Prior to that, a local race at a mile and a quarter won that one. And then going back uh, to a nice stretch of victories from September of 2022 to uh, January of 2023. I had won like six local races in a row uh, prior to that second place finish last time. So this one has a lot of ability. It's just uh, really stepping up in class. Sunset Flash, 30 to 1 morning line will round out the field. This one has a good record. This is a seven-year-old mare, 39 starts, 16 wins, eight seconds and five thirds. Uh, she's won her last four starts. Uh, but she was stretching out in distance from six furlongs to one mile last time. No problem. She won that one easily by more than three lengths. But now she's got to go a mile and an eighth against a tough international group. Probably up against it, but you really can't knock her overall record. Uh, so in this race, uh, different ways you can go. Obviously, Country Grammar and Taba look like the two most likely winners on paper uh, for trainer Bob Baffert. Uh, but I'm going to go with a Japanese shipper in here as my top choice, uh, June Light Bolt, number six. This one at eight to one morning line. I just really like that improvement moving to the main track last time, um, in last year and in his uh, last four starts. And he has three wins in a row and he won a group one at a mile and an eighth last time. Uh, fresh for this. I just think he's probably sitting on a decent effort. Uh, and I think that uh, at, at the price, uh, I think it's worth a play. So number six, June Light Bolt will be my top choice. And here are my wagering strategy in this, is in, in this race. I'm going to make a win wager on number six. I'm going to play an exacta six with the 210. Uh, and the 210 are Country Grammar and, and Taba. And then I'm going to put the two and 10 on top of the six and another exacta. And then a trifecta. I'm going to play the two six ten with the two three four six ten in second. And then for the third slot, I'm just going to use the three and four crown pride and emblem road. Uh, so the wagering strategies are on the screen now. And don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if you like this content. And again, I'm going to be back. Check out my YouTube channel this week, the honey bee and the rebel stakes from Oakland Park. Until I see you next time. Good luck at the races.